Hello and welcome back to Colonial Airstream. I'm Patrick Botticelli. Today, join me for a tour of the all new 2020 Airstream Baby 19CB. This trailer is 18 foot 11 inches from the center of the ball to the very back of the trailer. It is eight foot wide on the exterior, giving you seven foot seven inches of interior width. The exterior height for the top of the air conditioning is nine foot three, and the interior headroom is six foot four from the floor to the bottom of the air conditioning on the inside. The gross vehicle weight rating is 5,000 pounds, giving you a dry weight of 3,650 pounds. Your net carrying capacity as a cargo you can put inside of the trailer is 1,350, and the hitch weight is 525 pounds. It says a 16,000 BTU four set air propane furnace, a 13,500 BTU air conditioning with electric heat strip, and a base MSRP of $51,900. If you come over here, there's a factory window sticker, and you have your base MSRP of $51,900, and this has an optional solar charging system. So that's the one option that's available uh, it, besides interior decor. And there's two decors we'll talk about soon. The solar charging system, this has is $1,700. It gives you one 90 watt panel on the roof and it gives you upgraded batteries. You go from standard Group 24 series lead acid batteries to Group 24 series absorb blast mat batteries and they're 80 amp hours a piece. So when you get the solar, you get the upgraded batteries. I highly recommend that. The national destination fee is $1,334. And the total MSRP is $54,934. Uh, if you want to come on inside, this is a very open floor plan. This is one of the most open floor plans of the Bambi series. Gives you a wide area here, so if you have kids or uh, pets inside, uh, you're not walking down an aisle stepping over them. You have a lot more room. This is the interior decor you get on all Bambies. It will be this cabinet, this countertop, and this floor. The option is the, the color of the Performatex uh, cushion material. So this is a very durable uh, material. It's washable and you could get a dark blue called Ocean or Dune, which is the light gray we're in right now. This dinette folds down into a 40 inch by 91 inch uh, dinette bed that will sleep two kids. This trailer sleeps a total of four. Uh, where you sleep the other two is the bed in the back. This bed is 48 inches wide uh, by 76 inches long, so you could sleep two adults in this corner bed. It has a 4.3 cubic foot Novacool refrigerator. Now this is quite different than previous year Bambi models because this refrigerator is not an absorption refrigerator. Therefore it does not run on propane, it runs on battery and it runs on electricity. You just turn it on, you set your temperature, usually around 3, there's a little dial in the back. It's got a freezer up top. And the main advantage to this style refrigerator is the depth. If you look at the depth of this and you compare it to an absorption refrigerator, it's about double the depth. So if you look at the exterior door, it does look like a small refrigerator. Uh, but once you open up and you see the depth, you'll understand the, how they get the 4.3 cubic foot. It's very efficient when it runs on uh, battery or electricity. Uh, it, it does not require exterior venting. It, it has interior venting through a vent system here on the floor and one up top here. Uh, because it doesn't burn any propane fumes. So you don't have to worry about heavy winds blowing uh, water behind the vents in the refrigerator. And you could leave this on when you're driving. So it's a major benefit over an absorption refrigerator. It's a nice upgrade Airstream did for uh, 2020. There's a privacy curtain that pulls across. It's giving you uh, privacy for this bedroom area. And there's a television in the bedroom that you could unlock and you could swing around and you could use it in your living area. So if you're sitting at the dinette, you can still watch TV, but you could also utilize the TV when you're laying in bed. The 13,500 BTU air conditioner we spoke about earlier has manual dial, so you can hit warm or cool. You could open vent to dump air straight down. You could change your fan speed 
and um, you could put air out of the sides. It has a filter here that you get to check periodically. Uh, when you go and look at the Caravel series, that's also available with the 19 CV floor plan. That's the floor plan we're right now, but we're in the Bambi series. The Caravel has uh, a number of upgrades up and above the Bambi. One of them would be the air conditioning is ducted. So there would be duct work throughout the whole entire trailer instead of bringing the air straight out of the uh, filters here. And then the Caravel will have a digital upgrade on the thermostat. But there's eleven dollars to $12,000 difference and price between a Bambi and Caravel, so you'd have to decide whether or not you want some of those features. And I have separate videos on each one of the Caravel models, the 16 RB to 19 CB, 20 FB, and 22 FB on our YouTube channel, so you just want to make sure you check those out after you watch this video. But moving on into the back here, there's a corner bathroom. And it has this fold away door and the advantage of the door is when you're not in the bathroom you have more room to get in and out of the bed to make the bed here. Beautiful uh, pillow top memory foam mattress Airstream does. These mattresses are excellent. Uh, just you know at optimal room temperature 65 to 75 degrees it's, it's most comfortable. But gives you more room and then when you're using the toilet to get more room here the door folds out this way. And it gives you a lot more room to get changed and dressed after you're done taking a shower. Uh, but as a regular style foot flush toilet, it's a plastic Thetford toilet. When you go to Caravel, that will be a porcelain toilet. Toilet paper holder off to the side. Uh, the tanks inside this trailer has a 27 gallon freshwater tank. Uh, also has a 28 gallon gray tank. Gray waste is your sink and shower waste. And then it has an 18 gallon black waste tank that would be strictly for the toilet. There's a ventilation window in here in the bathroom that cranks out. These are tinted safety glass windows. Uh, the blinds are adjustable and you could pull them up if you unclip them. It has a fiberglass shower enclosure. It's a two piece and it has this ledge here so you could sit down inside. It has a standard Moen or Delta shower diverter. And then if you follow this up, it has a wand which is removable. You could set your desired temperature, pause it, and then lather up to save water, and then put it back on. There's a little switch here, and then rinse yourself down. It has a clothesline built into it that you can pull across, and this would be for light items. I wouldn't recommend putting towels on it. Once you get it to your area uh, where you want it, you just lock it in, and then unlock it, unhook it, and it'll roll back. This has a roll away shower door. The great thing about this uh, door is it's uh, mold and mildew resistant, but when you roll it across, that clicks right in, but when it rolls back, there's a squeegee in it that rolls, uh, runs all the water off this curtain, and it'll go right down the drain, which is the drain right here. And it's always best practice when you're towing to leave the drain plug in so you don't dissipate that water in the P-trap and get any tank odor inside the trailer. So you want to make sure you have that and you put that in. There's a light in the bathroom here which is hand operated or if you go to the switch set on the wall is off uh, this switch set. So you have two different ways to turn it on and off. The vanity area has a high quality uh, residential faucet thick stainless steel deep bowl sink, regular electrical outlet. When you go to the Caravel series, that model comes with a 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter, which will give you electricity off your stored battery juice uh, for several outlets in the trailer. That's not available on the Bambi series, but you could do it aftermarket. Plenty of storage below the vanity. Plywood with laminate, so there's no particle board in any of the construction of this Airstream. It also has premium hardware that's detachable and adjustable. So if the door ever got out of square, you could adjust it using the hardware. Um, and then it has a heavy duty J latch to keep it shut when you're driving. And you need a good amount of force to open that up. There's a medicine cabinet over this area with a mirror. And then you have a towel bar. The furnace here, the Forsyth Air Propane Furnace, 16,000 BTU. 
you to operate it, you bring this switch, and it's really, really hard. You got to push hard, and it's on purpose so it doesn't accidentally bound, uh, bump on when you're driving. Put that over to the left, and then change, uh, select your temperature. The furnace will kick on. Once it gets your desired temperature, it will shut off. These are the light switches for the vanity, bathroom, and bedroom. The water heater, this has a six gallon water heater with DSI ignition that uses propane fuel as its source. You flip this switch up, red light will come on. Once the water heater ignites, red light will shut off. If the water heater uh, misfired, the red light will come on and let you know you don't have propane, you're out of propane, you got something stuck in the tube that prevented it from igniting. Um, so the red light is a warning. But when you do turn on the water heater, you got about 15-20 minutes and the water will get to your desired temperature, about 130 degrees, so just be cautious not to scold yourself. And then you can take your uh, your shower and then you leave it on the whole time you're at the campground if you want. You just don't want to leave that on if you're not, if you don't have water in the tank uh, is a precautionary. Moving back here, there's two lights over the bed. These are LED lights in this trailer and these are hand operated. You have the tamper door here for additional storage. These are really deep. Uh, Airstream's been using these for a long, long time. You can see some of the late 60s, 70s trailers with this similar style door. The back window is also an emergency exit. And that hinges out to climb out of the trailer in case of emergency. Uh, there is no screen on this window or props to keep the window open. Uh, it's strictly for emergency. The curtains have blackout lining built into them. And they're, they're Velcroed the little straps here. And if you undo them, you can bring the curtain across. And there's snaps here on the wall to give you a nice tight seal. There's also one here on the side. And this window does open. You just spin the little dial. And there's an insect screen here on the bottom. The, bo the top part is in a fixed position. Has the same style uh, curtain here. The television is on a release. So when you're driving, you just snap this back and that will lock it in place. And then you pull the release when you want to bring the TV around. On the wall here, there's a regular electrical outlet. This television runs on 12 volt DC power. So you could run that off your battery system. And then there's a cable inlet on the outside of the trailer, but there's also an aerial antenna. If you press this little button in, that will turn the antenna on and boost the signal up for you. And then you just want to make sure when you're hooked into the cable at a campground that this is off, or for long term that you do shut that off because it will drain your battery. Remote control for the TV, and there's a ledge up here to store other items. Because you have two double port USB charge ports here, so you can charge all your electronic devices at night right before you go to bed. Up here on the ceiling, we have a fantastic fan. When you go to the Caravel series, uh, it will also have a thermostat, motorized lid, and uh, a rain sensor. This is a manual one, so all you do is turn this, and then you select your speed. And then the screen is quick release. So you could clean the blades in the screen if you pull that release there. And then you can upgrade them aftermarket to the motorized Fantastic fans or a Max Air fan if you decided to. There's two speakers in this trailer for the stereo. We're going to see that in a little bit. There's one here and there's one right here. Down here on the floor is the battery charger. This charges the two standard batteries that comes with the trailer as well as the upgraded absorbed glass mat batteries this trailer has. Uh, this flips down to get to your electrical breakers uh, for your electrical outlets, microwave, and uh, air conditioning. And the battery charger portion is below, so as long as the battery switch is turned on, which we're on now, it's shut off, the batteries are off. You turn the battery on and you plug into electricity, that will charge the batteries. That switch does not need to be on if you have the optional solar charging system. The solar charging system will always charge your batteries for you whether that switch is on or not. These are all 12 volt fuses for all the 12 volt items like your lights, your water pump, the ignition for the water heater, the furnace blower. Uh, and then uh, if one of these fuses was to blow, there would be a red light next to it to indicate that that fuse burnt. And everything's labeled in here too. 
just keep this area clear, pet, pet bedding or a bag. There's a fan in here that cools this area down. Uh, you don't want to clog it because you overheat your uh, battery charger. In the wardrobe, we have a light up top here. We have a trash pail that that's stored in here now. And this is the owner's bag with all the owner's manuals that comes with this trailer. There's a wardrobe rod up top so uh, with notches in it so your clothes don't slide back and forth. And there's also room up top. But again, plywood laminate. This is not a sticker. This is not particle board. Pocket hole screws. Um, Airstream does a great job manufacturing these trailers. This floor too, this floor is a vinyl floor and it's laid on top of a, a tongue and groove plywood uh, the vinyl floor is laid on top of a tongue and groove plywood floor and that plywood floor has an outdoor exposure rating but it also has anti-wicking painted to the whole perimeter so if it did get wet it wouldn't wick it through the whole entire floor. Moving up to the front cabinet here we got the stereo. Stereo has a USB input here, has an auxiliary input, has a CD DVD player, this is hooked to the TV in the back. Uh, it's you know, Bluetooth enabled, uh, had Pandora ready, so it has a lot of great features, but it is uh, a JVC. Uh, this model they're using the KDT700BT, if you want to look that up online. There's a USG, uh, USB charge port next to it, a ledge up top for storage, and then standard is a wireless backup camera with a 5 inch to 5.6 inch display. Uh, all you're going to do is uh, plug this into your 12 volt uh, socket inside your tow vehicle, turn your parking lights or headlights on, and that will power rear camera, which we're going to see when we go outside. Uh, this is great for backing up, but it's also great for driving. You can leave it on the whole entire time when you're driving to see exactly what's going on behind you. This cabinet here is just storage. You have a carbon dioxide detector in the bedroom with a 9 volt battery, a smoke detector in the galley with a 9 volt battery. You do want to make sure you check them periodically. I would change them every six months like you would in a home. In the galley area, there's a two burner cooktop. When you go to a Caravel, certain models will have three burners, but the Caravel also have cooktop ventilation and vents outside. Because of the higher BTU on the Caravel, it requires cooktop ventilation. This model, you're just going to use your regular roof vent that's there already. But all you're going to do is turn it to the light, okay, and then hit the spark, and that will light that burner, and you got one for this one. This is a higher output, this is a lower output. And then when you're done cooking, you can put the lid down and use for extra counter space. Regular mowing faucet in the galley area, thick stainless steel deep sink with a cover. Some people use these as cutting boards. You have a task light over the galley area here that's hand operated. This window does open just like the bedroom window we saw earlier with the little crank on the side. You got a good amount of storage here. If you notice, this has an accent wall. It's a gray instead of the, the white, the off white color. Regular microwave comes standard. This is the you know, way you could uh, cook with the microwave on this model. It's a contour microwave. There's a drawer for storage. This is a full extension, so it's not like a three-quarter. j latch to keep it shut, premium hardware underneath, and these drawers can detach for service if a technician needed to get back here, because the water pump is back here uh, for winterization procedure they could get in. That's the battery disconnect we saw earlier. Propane leak detector down on the floor. That's hardwired to the battery system of the trailer, so there's no uh, uh, worrying about batteries on board. The furnace is right here. This is the intake and then there's a couple ducts here and then in the bathroom and it also has heated tanks. So the tanks are dropped into an insulated chamber when you turn your furnace on that circulates hot air around your tank and prevents the tank from freezing. It's meant to give you a seven degree boost in temperature in the tank. By no means is it meant to be living in year round when it's five degrees outside uh, you could be in the trailer and be comfortable, but it's best practice to empty the water out at that point. But it's meant for unexpected drops in temperatures. You get below freezing at night, you leave your furnace on, you should be okay. Serverware organizer here in this uh, kitchen cabinet, more storage above. 
Over here in the wall we have the sea level 2 tank monitoring system. We can monitor how much battery we have. Fresh water, we're at 0%, but it'll give you 0 all the way up to 100, which is quite different than most RVs. Most RVs, they give you thirds or quarters. We're going to give you more precise based on 0 to 100. We can monitor gray tank. We have 13%. We have some antifreeze in the system right now because it's winterized. And black waste tank, which is completely empty. We could also turn on the water pump from here. It's a demand pump, so it takes... You have 27 gallons of usable water in the fresh water tank. When you flip that switch on, it will then pressurize the water system in the trailer. Then when you turn on a faucet, it will sense a drop in pressure and kick the pump back on. When you flip this on, you'll have a light that indicates the pump's on. And once the pump pressurizes the system, it's going to shut off. And then when you turn on a faucet, it'll turn back on again. Regular electrical outlet here. And then look at this beautiful front panoramic window. I mean, people love to be able to sit in this dinette and, you know, have a whole vision of the whole entire trailer, but also be able to see all the way around the surroundings. My customers go to beautiful campsites, and a lot of it's all about the view, and in this trailer you can take advantage of that. We also have another task a light here, and then it has this front window opens all the way out. There's an insect screen here, and there's also a rock guard on the outside, and then this table has a soft edge laminate so when you lean your arms up against it it's not a sharp edge but this folds down into a bed I'm going to show you how that works what I'm going to do first is just tip this back cushion up and this one here like that and then this table lays on top of both benches this cushion is tucked far enough back it should clear so we're going to lift up the table slides into these little cleats on the wall and then we're going to bring the leg up and then it swings down and there's rubber bumper to keep it centered and then all you do is tuck these underneath bring this over here take the backrest squeeze it in and they use premium foam here. If you notice the difference in the thickness of an uh, Airstream cushion versus some other brand, you'll see that it's a lot thicker and a lot more comfortable. Uh, but again, the dimension on this bed is 40 inches by 91 inches. If you remove the headboard, you have that 91 inches. Most customers leave, you know, one of the headboards in. You have some light switches here by the entry door. One for the outside porch light and one for the ceiling light. You also have a drawer here by the entry door so you could store some items when you come into the trailer you could also kick off your shoes and there's shoe storage here off to the side it comes with this uh, welcome mat magazine or shoe or whatever gear storage here by the door fire extinguisher this is a pantry storage really deep shelves another electrical outlet here off to the side and they give you some hooks for some items, a dry erase board with a little marker and some magnets. And uh, just to review the overall, you know, now that you're in a different position, the space that you have in this trailer is a very generous space. If you have four people in this trailer, you know, no one has to squeeze in to walk by because of the open space inside. And then there's also storage underneath the bed. So every inch of this is trailer's used. There's a wheel wall back here that cuts into part of the bed. And then from here back is an extra trunk where we're going to see in a little bit. But you do have a good amount of storage underneath the bed. There's one bin here and there's another one behind it. You could bring these in the house and load them up with a lot of your belongings and then load them right into the trailer. There's also storage below the refrigerator. And it goes up and over the wheel well all the way back to the wall. So you can really put a lot of gear in there and then there's one above the refrigerator so if you compare this to a 19 cb of other model years of other model years the television was above the refrigerator so you didn't really get the storage by adding this cabin here they greatly in uh, in increased the storage in this trailer for the 2020 model year all uh, right let's take a walk outside i want to show you around the outside of the trailer where everything's located and how some of the stuff works the grab handle here by the entry door and a bumper up top so if you don't duck on the way out you'll smack your head but it has uh, 
heavy duty hardware for the entry door lock. The screen is detachable from the main door. It's all TIG welded here, has a heavy gasket. Uh, the, if you look at the Caravelle, it's going to have screen door guards. You could buy them for parts and have them put on if you need them on this model. That snaps right in and that closes. And it all lines up with a heavy duty extrude aluminum structure for the door. So this is a really thick gauge aluminum. It's all TIG welded here on the bottom. Grip tape so you don't slip on the way out. But when the door meets up with it, there's no way for water to get inside the trailer. Uh, and then there's a little uh, lip here, so if you want to sweep the trailer out with a little broom, it goes over the threshold here. But a really nice quality craftsmanship. The entry step is a steel step. You'll see it, it will be an aluminum step on the caravel. That just pushes in. This is the step light we spoke about inside. Uh, Airstream is a certified green uh, manufacturer. They achieved the Emerald rating. So you can go to certifiedgreenrvs.com and check out uh, how Airstream performed that. This entry door is insulated and clad with, with aluminum. And you got a heavy duty deadbolt here. So when you close the door, you could also deadbolt it. And then you got a hand riveted window in the entry door, which is uh, tinted and tempered. Polished aluminum grab handle. You can see the beautiful extruder aluminum belt line protection. This covers the, the two seams of the trailer where it's all riveted and cleans it up. This is what they call the rub rail protection where the sheeting meets the underbelly of the trailer. The whole underside of the trailer is wrapped in aluminum. You can see the, fre uh, the freshwater tank here is, is all cased in metal and it's uh, insulated inside of it. And you can see the frame running through, it's all painted throughout. You can see it's all riveted nice and tight. So it's very difficult for rodents to get inside of an Airstream travel trailer. And then below the plywood floor, there's a flex foil insulation that gives you an insulation uh, for that underbelly. Beautiful aluminum hinges on the door, all polished. There's a gutter rail over the entry door. All these rivets are buck riveted, so it's a two-person job. One guy on the outside, one member on the inside, bucking the rivets. The interior skin is separate from the exterior. There's about a two-inch gap. Uh, well, those rivets you see on the inside are pop rivets. So they make the whole shell, they carry all the items in, attach them inside the trailer, uh, but the interior sh sheathing's brought inside and there's insulation, equal bad insulation, between the interior and exterior of the trailer. There's also a membrane on the rib structure, there's aluminum ribs that go around, uh, that doesn't allow the, the cold to transfer on the inside or heat to transfer on the inside. Outside GFI protected electrical outlet here. And then it has a Zip-D awning. Uh, I have a lot of videos on how the awning operates if you're curious to see how that works. Uh, but it's metal protected. And it has a WeatherTech material where when you go to a Caravelle, it has umbrella striped material. So there's a little bit difference in the material. Also, the Caravelle is gonna have wheel locks on the end. This just has the twist locks at the top. But this awning goes out about seven foot and it goes cap to cap on this trailer. So it's about, it should be about a nine foot awning. This is the last that keeps the door from flying around on a windy day. And each one of these doors takes eight hours to manufacture. One key member of the factory manufactures that door in a day ship. Oversized rims and tires, these are 225-75 R15 load range E Goodyear Endurance tires. You want to check your tire pressure, maximum is 80 PSI. Also check your lug nut torque before every trip and then follow the procedure every 10, 25, 50 miles if you ever remove the tire. Has never adjust brakes, these are 12 inch drum brakes. When you go to the Caravelle, it will have never lube hubs. This has regular bearings and races. You do have to repack the wheel bearings based on the recommended procedure. And then the Caravelle have a shock absorber on each side. The Bambi does not. But it is a rubber torsion axle system. It's a Dexter axle system. Uh, very little moving parts, so there's really no wear and tear. And it allows the trailer to literally hug the road. Water heater we spoke about inside. This is a six gallon tank. 
gas uh, with a spark ignition. There's the drain plug here on the side. When you turn that switch on inside, it allows the gas uh, uh, valve to open, mix with combustible air, ignite, and excess heat and exhaust comes out of the top. You don't want to store things in here. When you compare it to the Caravelle series, Caravelle is going to come with a 9 gallon because it has a mixer valve. Same size tank, but it mixes the, it preheats the water before it brings in the tank to give you a 9 gallons continuous flow. This will give you 6. This is gas only, and the Caravelle is gas and electric. You have an option of either or. Heavy duty stabilizer jacks, all four corners on the Caravelle. These are lighter duty stabilizer jacks on a Bambi, and it comes with the tool to crank them down. That just takes that bounce out of your walk when you're walking around inside. Uh, they're not meant to level the trailer, they're just uh, meant to stabilize it. You can level it using leveling blocks underneath your tires. You can level up the side, and you have a manual hitch jack up front that allows you to manu uh, manually level it front to back. Tail lights, these are LED tail lights. Caravelle's gonna have a double stack tail light, so you see that difference. These windows on the sides are hair windows. When you go to a Caravelle, it'll be Airstream's hand riveted windows, kind of like the front window and the entry door window. There's the wireless backup camera. Beautiful Airstream let raised lettering here on the top. Bambi medallion, license plate bracket with light. Rear trunk storage, insulated weather sealed lockable has a mat here on the floor to protect the vinyl floor when you throw items in 30 amp 25 foot power cord this is the tool to operate the awning this is the tool to operate the stabilizer jacks and there's a, a hose here for a barbecue quick disconnect at the front of the trailer it's for a low pressure grill airstream sells the weber model that works with this trailer on their website we sell it on our parts store if you look inside, there's a light that illuminates this area, and you can get to some low point drains for winterization in there. When you go to the Caraville series, it'll have a back bumper that sticks out so the trailer's a little bit longer. It'll be a polished aluminum back bumper with a lid that lifts up for storage. On the baby, it's just clean lines in the back. This is where the cable or satellite will hook into the trailer. This is the 30 amp power connection when you go to a campground. That twist lock locks right in. This is where you empty the waste. You got a black tank with a black handle for toilet. Gray tank with a gray handle for sink and shower. Take this cap off. Airstream, Colonial Airstream gives you a premium RV starter kit with really, really nice hoses and accessories. Uh, we give you so you could hook up at the campground for the first time. But you could hook that up at the campsite and then you're gonna empty the black tank first. The waste will discharge out. You're gonna have some solids in there. When that's done emptying, you can close it and then open up your gray waste, which is a soapy water to clean out your waste hose. And there's a light here so you can see what you're doing at night. And then to take it a step further, after you empty the black tank out, it's all gravity fed, you could flush it out using the SOAR flush. So you'd hook up a regular garden hose to this connection here. Leave this waste handle open. Inside the tank, there's a wand under pressure. We'll spray the walls of the tank out to get, discharge any of that residual waste. Really best practice to use that each and every trip. When you're done using the trailer and you're gonna put it back in storage, you wanna flush the tank. This is the city water connection. This is where you're gonna hook up when you go to a campground. This bypasses your fresh water tank and just supplies water to all your faucets based on the pressure at the campsite. This has a water pressure regulator built into it. So if you get an unexpected spike in water pressure, uh, this will protect your plumbing inside the trailer. In the wheel well, which is insulated, there's a drip tube for the air conditioning. So any condensation up top on the trailer doesn't run down the side. It runs through a drip tube. It'll drip out next to the tire. This is the fresh water tank fill, the 27 gallon fresh water tank. Let's take the little cap off, stick the hose in loose. When the tank's filled, uh, there's an air relief valve here, but you'll have some water coming out here. This is lockable. You can also use the same key to get into your outside shower. Hot and cold water. Wand will hang up here, and you could rinse things off outside before you put them away for storage. Below the trailer here, we have the drain for the fresh water tank. So you just twist that drain valve, and that will gravity drain your fresh water tank. The gray waste tank is behind that, and then above the floor, underneath the toilet, is the black tank. 
This is a waste hose storage tube, so after you're done using your waste hose, you'll have a nice place to put it that's separate from all the other items in your trailer. Just a little twist cap here. This is the furnace and the furnace exhaust, so you don't want to park next to combustible items because this will get very hot. This is your VIN plate with your tire size, rim size, tire pressure recommendation. Everything you need to know safety-wise for tires is right here. And if you want to look underneath, you'll get a better view here of you know, the aluminum underbelly and the stabilizer jacks. But you can also see the spare tire, which I'll show you how that comes down a little bit. Up front here, there's a 3M rock protection that protects the body from little rocks that come up. Uh, the Caravel you'll see will have a stainless steel wrap protector, which is separated from the body and hingeable. Uh, you can add those aftermarket on this model, but because this is such a light trailer and you're going to be towing with lighter vehicles, uh, the 3M film is sufficient to protect the body from small stones and chips and sand when you're driving. These rock guards are standard on the Bambi. They're, they're called solar stone guards because they are tinted. This middle one lifts up, you spin the neural knob to adjust your height, and then you can lift the window up to your three different height adjustments here. And then these sides, if you take a screwdriver with a, a Phillips head screw, you could turn, quarter turn, and then what you could do is you could swing this out and lift it off and you could clean your glass behind. Don't ever tow with the trailer, the trailer with those off because you could bust the curved safety glass windows and they're quite expensive. You want to make sure that you put these tethers on before you tow the trailer as well. Propane tanks are 20 pound bottles. You undo this threaded nut here and you can lift the bottle cover off and then you turn this sideways and you can undo each bottle separately and get them filled. Or because they are 20 pound bottles, you can exchange them. So you don't have to wait. You just go to a camp, uh, gas station, give them this bottle, get a brand new one and keep going. There's um, a regulator here that allows you to go from either side bottle. You can point the arrow to this one or this one. There's a gauge here that will go from green to red. Red meaning empty, green meaning the tank has propane in it. To let you know whatever tank is pointed to is empty. This has an auto switch over, so if you have both tanks on, whatever one you start with, if that one goes empty internally, it will switch over to your other tank here. But these tanks typically last a customer in a whole entire season, unless they're really, really cold weather camping. These are the two batteries in a plastic battery box. When you go to a Caravel, you're going to see a metal battery box, which is lockable. But each battery is next to each other. They're 12 volt in parallel, giving you a total of 12 volt, just more amp hours because there's two. There's a ZAMP quick disconnect port here off to the side. Now this has the optional solar charging system, so it has a panel on the roof already, but you could add another panel externally that will help you if the trailer is in the shade, you could use that panel instead. And it literally just plugs in and it'll be a portable panel that has its own controller. If you come around this side, there's a propane, I'm sorry, yeah, right here. LPG port that you could hook that uh, portable barbecue grill into, just take the little dust cap off, snap the hose in, and then turn the gas valve on. And just remember, it is low pressure, so check compatibility. There's a box frame trailer, it's not a C channel, so it's a very rigid construction. This is painted by Airstream. This is a seven way connection. Your vehicle is going to need a seven way on the back of it, so when you plug it in, it will not only power the turn signals and brake lights, but your vehicle is also going to need an electric brake controller. This trailer has brakes on each wheel, so those brakes have to work. So when you step on the brakes in your vehicle, send signal to the trailer brakes. Uh, so some vehicles have them, some vehicles are pre-wired, but you can add one aftermarket. Some vehicles are not wired, and you have to add the wiring and the brake controller. But no matter what you have, you want to make sure you have a vehicle that has a 12 volt charge lead. So when you're driving down the highway, your alternator's charging the batteries in the trailer. That's best practice. Manual hitch jack on this trailer. You can upgrade it on the dealer level to electric hitch jack. On the Caravel, it comes st standard with electric hitch jack. Trailer breakaway cable here off to the side. So this is all t tied up right now, but normally this would be attached firmly to your tow vehicle. If the trailer and truck ever came separated, this will pull out and activate the trailer brakes so the trailer doesn't pass you in the shoulder. Never use this as a parking brake. This always has to be left in. 
if you leave it out, you're gonna rapidly drain your batteries in the trailer and you can burn the magnets out in the brake drums. Safety chains, it's always best practice to crisscross these when you hook them firmly to your hitch receiver. There's a two and five sixteenths inch ball, 525 pound tongue weight. We give you a colonial hitch lock so no one can lift this up and put a ball underneath it. And it is very recommended to use a weight distribution kit with sway control. So if you just were to put this 525 pounds in the back of your vehicle, it'll probably sag the back of your vehicle in some manner. And if the trailer ever swayed, it could get an extremely bad situation. So with a weight distribution kit that also has sway control, that's going to keep you level and prevent the trailer from swaying. Spare tire detaches. There's a little pin here. This slides across and drops down. And it just cradles in there. You could grab it. You could lift your jack up higher to get to it easier. But you got to check your tire pressure on this before every trip too. Uh, you don't want to be surprised that your spare tire is also flat. Okay. And then it has LED running lights all the way around. And uh, I want to show you the solar charging system. So if you want to give me this real quick. So up here is the 90 watt solar panel. That's a fantastic fan in the galley. Television antenna. There's a vent stack for your gray black tank, 13,500 BTU air conditioning, and all the way in the back is uh, another fantastic fan vent. Well, this is Patrick with Colonial Airstream in Lakewood, New Jersey. We're soon moving to Millstone Township on Route 33. Uh, we're going to be there starting February 2020, so you just don't definitely want to check us out there. Our telephone number is going to be the same. It's 1-800-265-9019. Our website is colonialairstream.com. This trailer is available at Colonial Airstream. I'm Patrick on Facebook. It's called Colonial Patrick. If you can reach out to me, I'd love the uh, opportunity to earn your business. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love it. We'll see you soon.